Hey guys, Sean here. Now, if you have heard of the global monetary reset, it's probably something along the lines of how the US dollar is going to lose its world reserve status, plus how China and Russia are going to spearhead this movement. Essentially, countries all around the world are going to get tired of the reserve currency being mismanaged. They want to de-dollarize and they will all band together to knock the dollar off its pedestal. Now, many people, especially if they are gold, silver, and crypto investors, are preparing for this scenario, and some are betting the whole farm on the collapse of the dollar and how a new world currency will emerge that will be backed up by a basket of commodities, fingers crossed, gold and silver. Now, I want us to take a sobering look at what it will take for the great currency reset to happen, what it will look like, and how we as rational investors can prepare for it without losing our minds to hype and hysteria. Because I am fully on board the train that a global monetary reset is inevitable, the structural problems with the dollar is clear as day, and how it essentially controls the world isn't something that's sustainable. Now, eventually every currency loses its reserve status, the Spanish whale had its time in the sun, the pound sterling had over 100 years of dominance, and the US dollar will be dethroned one day. But I do not expect it to collapse within a year or even 10 years. It's going to be a slow process and it's going to be a very painful process. And this will have horrible consequences, not just for America, but the whole world as well. Now, this means, however, we'll be able to see the warning signs, see the clues and get a sense of how close this reset truly is and be prepared before it's really too late. Firstly, to understand how the dollar can get dethroned, we first need to know how it got to the top. Because once you know its rise and the pillars that are popping it up, then we can recognize how close we are to the dollar's doomsday. Now, the US dollar effectively became the world reserve currency, I would argue, in 1944 when countries around the world collectively agreed to fix their currencies to the US dollar, which itself was backed by gold. You see, in World War I until the United States sold the world weapons and supplies and returned, they stocked out the world's biggest stash of gold while other countries had little to no gold bullion left. Now, this allowed America to become extremely rich and through the Bretton Woods Agreement, the dollar became the world reserve currency and countries fully trusted the dollar, right? They began buying treasuries because after all, the dollar was as good as gold, might as well get some return on it. Now, this trust was destroyed in 1971 when Nixon broke the dollar's link to gold and refused any more redemptions of dollars into physical gold. Now, this effectively devalued the dollar when the price of gold was revalued from around $20 up to over $35 an ounce. So you can just imagine the shock countries felt where suddenly all the dollars they held were effectively devalued with a single pen stroke and now they can't redeem their paper money for gold anymore as well. But for the US, this also posed a problem. Now, the United States dollar, the US dollar was no longer good as gold and if nothing was done to restore confidence or at least drive demand for these dollars, we can kiss goodbye to the world reserve status. Now, this was where the petrol dollar came into play, which is still functioning today. Now, the United States essentially went to Saudi Arabia and struck an agreement. We will buy your oil by providing defense and security and return. You can only sell your oil in dollars and these dollars will have to be reinvested back in US treasuries, right? And if you think about it, this was an ingenious agreement for the United States. It was the devil's deal. You give us oil, we'll give you dollars, and your dollars gets pumped back into the United States, allowing the country and the economy to grow even faster at very cheap interest rates or low bond yields. Now, because of the petrol dollar, the US was now restored as the world reserve currency. Because if you were another country, say China, India, Argentina, if you wanted oil or most other commodities today, you still needed dollars to trade for it. Now, this means you artificially created demand for dollars. There's no other major alternative even today. Yes, there are minor shipments of oil or wheat being sold for yuan or euros or yen, but the majority of trade today is still done in dollars. So if we zoom out, we can see that the dollar currently has around 80 years of dominance and the reserve status is really the United States to lose. But thanks to recent events, it is very possible for them to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. And if the US dollar loses its reserve status, it will likely be a consequence of self-inflicted wounds rather than an active conspiracy by the world to dethrone it. I believe that the dollarization process is done as a reaction to the horrible monetary policies and short-sighted actions made by the US itself. Now, there are two big factors today 
that I believe are actively working against the dollar and they are tilting the world towards the side of a global monetary reset. Now, the first is the horrible financial mismanagement of the dollar through the Federal Reserve. You cannot expect to print trillions of dollars from thin air through buying bonds and artificially suppressing yields by flushing the economy with cash. This is not organic demand for the dollar, it's government intervention and it can't last forever. Just like Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell singing the song of transitory inflation before eventually waving the white flag and admitting they were wrong about how bad things really are. The gigantic problem here is that every country has no choice but to hold billions upon billions of dollars as part of their reserves for trade as well as to protect their own currency. Just take a look at the major foreign holders of treasuries. Japan holds $1.2 trillion. China is trapped with a trillion dollars and UK is holding at least $600 billion worth of US bonds. There isn't much reward getting a 2-3% to interest at best while inflation is still soaring above 8%. Now, secondly, the sanctions imposed by the United States on Russia are making countries nervous and rethinking if holding too many dollars is really a wise move. Now, the issue with freezing Russia's reserve stash of $300 billion is that other countries, especially the ones who are competitors with the United States, are wondering if that could happen to them. China, for example, recently held an emergency meeting with their banks to discuss if their foreign assets overseas are truly safe. Even Israel, a long-time ally of the US, has reduced the exposure to dollars and added to the Chinese Yuan and is betting on riskier bonds and equities. Right? Their actions shows that it is less and less attractive to hold US treasuries which are becoming more like return-free risk. Right? You run the risk of default if the US can't pay while the return is almost non-existent. Now, the IMF has been keeping track of this de-dollarization trend and it is nothing new. Even before the Russia-Ukraine war, the share of the US dollar as a reserve currency has fallen from 70% to below 60% and other alternative currencies such as the Australian dollar and Chinese yuan are becoming more popular. So now we know the precarious situation the dollar is in even though it is still the de facto currency and a financial hegemon today. Next, we are going to discuss two scenarios of how the global monetary reset can happen the slow burn where the dollar loses prominence gradually like a thief in the night or a big currency crisis that could suddenly trigger a reset. Let's talk about the thief in the night scenario. Sometimes the most likely case is one that just creeps out on you. It's like not eating right and avoiding the gym and you wake up one day and suddenly you're overweight, right? Now the same can happen to the US dollar and I call it the dollarization by a thousand cuts. It is a process where other countries just get pissed off enough and they start doing more and more trade deals with their local currencies and just bypass the US dollar. Now, this is not a myth, it's already happening across the world and the center point of this is Russia. Now, the big issue with sanctions on Russia is that now the commodity supergiant is striking back out on two fronts. They are no longer selling gas to Europe for dollars or euros, they are demanding rubles and countries are beginning to play ball whether they like it or not. Now, this is a form of the dollarization. And the second financial front Russia has opened up against the dollar is selling their oil to India and China at a discount. And the amazing thing is the US influence on India isn't truly working as they expected as the country is even now discussing more ways to buy cheaper Russian oil. This is the prisoner's dilemma that the sanctions really fail to foresee. If Russia can't sell their oil to the West thanks to the embargoes, they will have to discount it and sell it elsewhere. There will always be a country out there eager to buy cheap oil. We can already see that globalization is starting to break down as countries are now prioritizing their own domestic interests instead of what the United States wants. Now, we just saw recently the Saudis discussing with China selling oil for yuan, but the most important silent de-dollarization is when central banks around the world start buying more gold. Remember that the US dollar being the world reserve currency, right? Now, this means that gold is also priced in dollars and when countries buy gold, a huge amount comes from the international markets and that means central banks are effectively selling away their dollars for gold. They are removing dollars from their reserves in exchange for a neutral store of value, which is gold. Now, we can see that except for a few months in 2020, central banks have been buying up tons of gold every single year and that is even when the gold price was rising higher and higher to above $2,000 an ounce. 
Plus, central banks were asked the reasons why they are buying gold, and while a minority stated that it was part of their de-dollarization policy or anticipating a global reset, other reasons included a no default risk and a lack of political risk, which is also in a roundabout way just stating a lack of trust when it comes to the dollar. Now, this scenario I believe is more likely how the dollar will lose its prominence and a global reset will occur in the form of multiple reserve currencies. Jerome Powell, for all his faults, is also anticipating this and isn't blind to the possibility of the dollar sharing the reserve spot with other currencies or even gold. Now, if this scenario comes to pass, there will simply be multiple reserve currencies around the world for countries to choose from and to trade with. And yes, it will still be a fiat system, there will still be nothing tangible backing it up, and countries can just simply strengthen or devalue their currencies based on their own monetary policies. Basically, instead of $1 to control them all like Lord of the Rings, it will be two or three currencies, pretty straightforward. But now let's talk about the other deadly alternative, which is a sudden collapse and the world being forced into a global monetary reset. Now, this case is becoming stronger today and can really spiral out of control very easily and it all has to do with the US dollar gaining strength. Alright, this might sound confusing to many. If the US dollar gains strength, how is it possible for it to lose its reserve status? Firstly, we cannot think of the dollar in isolation. It is connected to every other currency in the world. And the issue with a stronger dollar is that it destroys trade and economic growth for the rest of the world. Right now, we are seeing a big liquidity crisis because every country needs more dollars because of two things that are happening in the economy. Firstly, compared to the Federal Reserve, other central banks are not tightening as much or raising interest rates as fast. In fact, the Bank of Japan has been buying an unlimited amount of bonds and the ECB is still printing money. Now, this means that the dollar looks like the best fiat currency of the bunch. Basically, if we see fiat currencies as sinking ships, the US dollar is sinking the slowest. Now, secondly, because the US is about to suck out money from the system through quantitative tightening, suddenly there will be fewer dollars in the system. But the demand is still there, right? Countries still need dollars to trade for commodities and to service their dollar-denominated debts. Now, this is not a cause for celebration because a strong dollar will destroy the world economy if left unchecked, and I'll explain why. Now, a strong dollar will trigger a deadly rush to dollars. As the demand for dollars increases, countries are forced to print more of their local currency to get dollars to import commodities like food and fuel and to also pay their debts. And this starts a daily cycle where the stronger the dollar gets, the weaker other countries become as a result of all this money printing. And when global currencies become weaker and devalue faster than the dollar, suddenly everyone will just rush to dollars even more, right? Suddenly it's becoming more of a safe haven. Now the dollar will flow to the United States at the end of the day and find its way to bonds, US stocks, and even gold as well. Now this is the dollar milkshake theory postulated by Brent Johnson where the US just sucks up all of the world's dollars and causes havoc in the economies of the rest of the world. Now suddenly, the rest of the world's their inflation goes through the roof. They default on their debt because dollars become more expensive and their economies just plunge into a deep recession. Now obviously, this can't go on forever. There will come a tipping point where foreign countries have had enough and will demand for a new monetary system, a global currency reset, and the US will be forced in a sense to the negotiating table. Now, there's a reason why I call this the deadly alternative because the dollar won't go down without a fight. There will be pushbacks and things can easily escalate into a conflict where in a sense, it would be the United States versus the entire world. But let's just focus on a global monetary reset and what might actually replace the US dollar. Now, if this forced reset occurs where the world has had enough and we are witnessing another Bretton Woods moment where everyone gathers around a table and just demands change, right? then it likely won't be a fiat-based system because at this point, countries and people will be distrustful of paper or electronic money that can be conjured into existence whenever a central bank wants. They will likely want some constraints on the money creation and that means we will likely see a commodity-backed currency. Now, I want to quickly interject here and mention that we probably won't be heading back to the medieval times where we trade around physical gold and silver coins or bars because it is just too inconvenient, especially in the coming age of digital currencies. But back to the main point, 
if a force reset was to happen, it will likely be a new currency that will emerge and back itself with a basket of commodities. Now, it could be a combination of historic monetary metals such as gold and silver, of course, but it could also include other essential commodities such as oil and wheat, you know, the physical things of life that we truly need. Now, this is nothing new and has been brought about by Zoltan Poza from Credit Suisse and mentioned how we are already witnessing the birth of Bretton Woods III, a new world monetary order centered around currencies that are backed by commodities that will challenge the dollar system and cause rising inflation in the West. Notice what Zoltan said here, commodities are collateral and collateral is money. The crisis is about the rising allure of outside money, which means money that's backed by real tangible commodities over inside money. And he goes on to mention that our current monetary system, the foundations of the fiat system crumbled when Russia's FX reserves was frozen, when they were seized. Now, how exactly this will play out, we don't know for sure, but Zoltan leaves us a clue of what he thinks the ending will be. He mentions, when this crisis is over, the US dollar should be much weaker, while the Chinese Yuan will be much stronger and backed by a basket of commodities. Perhaps it's no wonder that China has been stockpiling food, gold and oil for the longest time. Now, we really won't know how this will play out, and right now, it is pure speculation as well. But we can see the signs appearing. Russia is trying to force the ruble on Europe for energy and has explicitly said a few months ago that they would accept gold as payment for their natural resources. Maybe it could be gold that backs up a portion of the new world currency or perhaps it could include a whole laundry list of commodities from silver to natural gas to wheat as well. Who really knows? But let's talk about what this means for you. How do you prepare and what happens if a global monetary reset involves a commodity-backed currency? And obviously, this will mean commodities, especially the one involved in the pack will just shoot out, right? Because God knows how many dollars or currency units are truly sloshing around the world. While commodities, whether it is gold, silver or oil, they're all limited. It is a finite amount in the ground. So even if this is a partial pack, it won't be a surprise to see the price of gold suddenly jump up by 50%, 100% or more. And this is one reason why to hold physical gold and silver other than them just being a store of value to hedge against inflation, they could be the link to tomorrow's money. Now, I need to mention that we are talking about the physical stuff, gold that you can hold in your hands, not some paper contract or IOU held in some ETF or futures contract. Because if it's suddenly declared that, for example, gold is going to back up the new world currency, futures traders will all start demanding physical delivery of all the COMEX and paper gold contracts out there. And if you didn't know by now, there could be a hundred times or more paper contracts being traded around versus the actual physical gold that it represents. So unless you really hold a physical metal, you don't really own it, right? There is counterparty risk. And another point many miss out on is the journey towards a reset where commodities are now backing the new currency. We will likely see a stronger dollar and the dollar milkshake effect come into play. Now, this means the vacuum effect of the United States sucking up all the dollars in the world could really happen, whereby the dollars just rush into US equities or the stock market. So I'm personally won't be surprised if you know that happens and I'm positioning myself for the upside as well. The stock market could really skyrocket as well. Now, we can already see the US dollar gaining strength ever since the Russia-Ukraine conflict started and even though inflation is sky high. And I think it's very important to hold these conflicting thoughts, uh, these two conflicting thoughts in our minds whereby, yes, the US dollar could get replaced with a commodity-backed currency eventually, but it is also possible for it to gain strength and the American economy to get much stronger in the short term before global reset. So we need to consider the different possibilities because the reset could either be soft and silent or it could be a sudden bang where out of the blue, gold is suddenly back in the picture, backing the new world reserve currency. Now, I want to end this video by saying that I'm hoping for the former where there will be multiple reserve currencies and a gradual decline and I'll tell you why. Remember when I said the US dollar is backed by oil and the demand for it to buy other commodities today? Now, that is partially true. The US dollar is also backed up by the American war machine, its military. And we do not know if things could escalate if a sudden currency reset was forced upon the world and America faces the prospect of the dollar 
losing its reserve status. Can America get back the reserve status? I would say it's possible. Ray Dalio mentioned that the United States could turn things around, but it required a heroic effort by the people in power on Capitol Hill to be financially responsible, spend money prudently, and build back the dollar's reputation in the eyes of the world. Now, whether that will happen is highly debatable, but whatever the case, I want to be holding tangible assets and commodities, and the easiest way is to simply hold gold and silver. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Are we moving towards a monetary reset soon? Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon.